Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. I am Lendi Ruano, and I am with Easter Seals of Southern California and the Disability Tribe Initiative. Next slide, please. Today's live webinar, Reshaping Our Services in Our Future, will be offering Spanish and ASL interpretation. Para las personas que necesitan o prefieren el español, pueden hacer clic en el icono con el globo blanco en la parte baja de su pantalla que dice Interpretation. Después haga clic en Spanish. Usted tendrá la opción de silenciar el audio original y podrá escuchar la voz de Rubén Díaz traduciendo en vivo. En el canal de español, si selecciona Mute Original Audio, nada más escuchará al intérprete. Si no hace clic en Mute Original Audio, entonces escuchará a los presentadores de habla inglés al fondo. Our ASL interpreters are Don and Lorelei. They have been spotlighted so they can always be seen throughout the presentation. Depending on your device, this may mean that sometimes you cannot see the presenter. We apologize for the inconvenience, but we want to make sure that this live meeting and recording can be accessible to everyone. This presentation will have closed captioning, which you can access using the button at the bottom of the screen. Next slide, please. A few things to note about Zoom before we get started. This meeting is being recorded to allow us to refer back to a discussion today and the input we receive. You can hear and see us, but we cannot hear and see you. Everyone has been automatically put on mute for any camera is not on. Chat is not activated for attendees. However, presenters will be sharing some information through the chat during the webinar. If you would like to ask a question or provide a comment, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. We also ask that you indicate which presenter you would like to send the question to. We have staff monitoring and responding as necessary. Some questions will be answered in real time, and for some, we may ask for an email address so that we can follow up with a more thorough answer. Si usted quiere hacer su pregunta en español, por favor escríbala en el sector de QIA. Tenemos agentes de habla hispana disponibles para contestar. For those of you on a phone or a device, you may not be able to use all the features we discuss. We will be providing other options for you to access materials or ask questions later in the webinar. Finally, at the end of today's webinar, we will be asking you to participate in our post-event survey. Once the webinar is over, a new window will pop open with the survey. Please provide your feedback so we can improve on future events. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce Amber Carey Navarrete, Director of Person-Centered Services at Easter Seal Southern California. Amber? Thank you so much, Lundy. Hello, and thank you all for joining us on today's webinar as we continue to explore alternative services for the disability community in California. We, as a community, continue to find ourselves in a constant state of change. The cases of COVID continue to go up and down, and with that, health and safety mandates also fluctuate. We are all doing our best to remain vigilant and yet flexible to meet or receive the best and safest services possible. Luckily, with great challenges, comes great innovation. And we at DTI have been hearing all around the disability community about the wonderful and sometimes surprising benefits of alternative, remote, and hybrid services. Now, don't get me wrong, we all want to get to a place where we can be back together in person as soon as it is safe to do so, and many have already started to do this. But does this mean everything we've been doing and learned in this past year and a half needs to stop? The answer to that question lies with all of you out there using supports and services. What do you want? Are you like the many we have been hearing from who love the flexibility and individualization that alternative services have provided? And to you providers out there, how can we combine the best of the past year and a half with the best that came before and then continue to innovate for the best that is still to come? We are fortunate today to have the ARC San Francisco with us to share how they have evolved through this time. 
how they've become even more person-centered, how they've been able to continue to provide interesting and engaging hybrid services even a year and a half later, and how they continue to find and pursue new opportunities with every passing day. To get us started, I have the pleasure of introducing several of the people from the ARC San Francisco as they tell us in their own words what it was like getting started with remote alternative services. Please play the video. learn um, how, um, to make my own um, schedule and um, 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 to write my own speeches for the town hall and um, and I learned how to um, to send out emails I learned how to eat how yeah, home. Excellent. Well, eating healthy. Excellent. So, how have you learned how to do that? I take kids' nutrition class and um, seeing what food to eat at home that is healthy, like vegetables and fruit. Also, learn what I uh, our food network. Awesome. What do you like about the ARC Food Network? Because of cooking. Nice. Cooking some food, something. Excellent. Thank you for your input. I know how I just started a body because I went to a health matters class with uh, Nurse Marilyn. And it helps me because it doesn't get my muscles hurt a lot. So what have you learned, Brandon? Are you taking and talking to your friends and on a Zoom? So Delia, what have you learned through the ARC's remote learning services? Oh, I know. I forgot her name. The time helped me go. Yeah, how did they help you? With friends. Nice. Great. How do you get to see your friends? Yes, too. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I have a feeling some of the things that we were hearing from the people at the ARC San Francisco really probably resonated with many of us. There has been so much that people have learned over this time. And it was a quick pivot last year to alternative services, but most were able to rise to the occasion. Next slide. Yet, if you've struggled with these changes, you too are not alone. And that is why DTI was created, to support everyone to meet the challenges of these times and to bring our community together to share innovative ideas and strategies, like those that were created at the ARC San Francisco. So with that, I would like to introduce you to Cynthia Kreutzor, their Associate Director of Community Engagement. Hi, I'm Cynthia Kreutzor. I'm so happy to be with you here today. I'm the Associate Director of Community Engagement for the ARC San Francisco. I'd like to begin by thanking all of the amazing participants and staff at the ARC for their help with this presentation, and even more importantly, for their help in keeping our community alive and vital during these challenging times. I'm going to be giving you an overview of our presentation. Next slide, please. So during this presentation, we're going to be talking about hybrid services in the future. So hybrid services include in-person services and remote services. 
Uh, Kim Thalen is going to be discussing the expanded remote services and why remote learning continues to be valuable. Lanita Britton will be discussing hybrid and community-based learning, bringing the classroom to you. So we currently, we are doing uh, some in-person classes outdoors and in participants' neighborhoods. And then finally, Mim Weisberg will be discussing what's next, the ongoing need for hybrid services. And Mim is currently doing some in-person out art classes outdoors and also an art outdoor pop-up art sales shop. And she also does art classes remotely. So Mim's art students can be doing their art at home and still sell their artwork in their pop-up shop. Now I'd like to give you a tour of the hub. Our remote learning services have been based largely on the hub. So this is the hub, the remote learning platform for the ARC San Francisco. So like many of you, we needed to pivot very quickly. Um, we went from wiping down our tables and chairs with bleach to needing to close our doors. And what we did was we came up with a way of supporting each other remotely. So when we put together this hub, our participants could go home, go onto the website and see this message. Welcome to the hub, the ARC SF's remote learning site. We're glad you're here. So the hub is a digital resource for learning, connecting and accessing information and instructional content created for the staff and participants at the ARC SF. Use this site to access classes and activities safely and remotely. While students and staff may not be in the same physical location, visitors can attend a class or enjoy an activity by visiting web pages across a variety of subjects. Explore the tabs for a list of classes, activities, and events that will keep you connected, engaged, and inspired. So there are three main aspects to the hub. One is there's some self-directed learning opportunities. And I will give you an example. These can be used by participants independently or with their family and circle of support or with staff support. So for instance, we have some yoga classes, some pre-recorded yoga classes that are available. Hello and welcome to Yoga with Adrian. I'm Adrian and this is Benji. And whatever brought you here, whether it was a Google search or So that's Yoga with Adrian. So that is available 24-7 anytime a participant um, is interested. So another aspect of the club is we do have a contact feature. So if there are technical difficulties, which there are sometimes, um, any user can send an email, it goes to the hub at the ARCSF and there's a trained team of people who respond to the technical issues. So there are two ways. The other uh, important aspect of the hub are our live classes. And there are two ways to access those. One is through our Google Calendar. And for instance, here we have Breakfast Club, and this was started at participants' request and is hosted by Kim Thielen, who you'll be hearing from shortly. 
So the participants, one of the things they really missed when we were sheltering in place and couldn't see each other in person was they missed starting their day getting together with their friends. Breakfast Club has had many different forms. People used to meet, one group used to meet for Breakfast Club uh, in Gallery One at the Ark Building at 1500 Howard Street. And it would be about six to eight people who would meet for Breakfast Club. So now Breakfast Club is online. It's hosted by Kim Thielen. And now more than 40 participants can come to Breakfast Club. And they have breakout rooms and they're able to start get their day off to a good start chatting with their friends and planning the day. When we first started the hub, of course, our focus was on keeping our participants safe. But as we, as we progressed, we found that there are some, are some surprising advantages to having remote services and alternative services. Our alternative services have led to a blossoming of participant leadership, self-determination, and creativity. So for instance, one participant, Cole, who lived in Marin, uh, he was not able to participate in drama classes because there were no drama classes offered in Marin. Through our, through our remote services, Cole is able to participate in a city college drama class online. Cole, because of alternative services, Cole does not have to wait for a theater class to come to Marin. Cole does not have to wait for four to six participants to also be interested in theater. Cole could participate in a city college theater class and Cole could be Danny, the lead, the male lead in the, the musical Grease. Many other clients have also benefited. We've had some participants who because of physical issues were too ill, even with door-to-door -door van service to come to our buildings and participate in classes. Some of those participants have been able to participate online. We have other participants who might be on the autism spectrum who are overwhelmed by uh, too much noise and busyness. Those participants have also benefited from being able to participate online where they can choose, where they can control the volume levels and they can choose to participate with their video on, with their audio on, or their video off, or their audio off. Some choose to participate in the chat. We have another participant, Chris, who is very passionate about hiking and nature. And again, Chris, did, Chris um, the old format of having to have services between nine and three did not work well for Chris. Chris is, can be very independent. He volunteers for the Golden Gate National Park and the Presidio Trust. Chris doesn't need nine to three services every day. For volunteering, Chris might just need an hour a week of check-in. However, Chris also had a dream. He had a dream to provide, Chris is an alternative communicator. He communicates with a, a communication device. And he had a dream to provide on YouTube a virtual tour of the Presidio section of the Bay Area Ridge Trail. So that was a huge project. So while, while Chris was working on that project, he might not need one hour of services, he might need 16 hours a week of services to, to create the presentation. Uh, it's a wonderful presentation available on YouTube. Um, and it, he highlights the, the animals and plants and the history of the trail. So for writing and editing that presentation, Chris needed more staff support. And because of alternative services, we could be flexible enough to give him more support. And then he, with his communication device, he created the audio and he also created the video of the trail. And then for videoing it and editing that video, he also needed more support at that point. And because of the flexibility of alternative services, we were able to provide that. Another advantage of, of alternative services and a hybrid services where we're doing both remote and in-person services is for staffing. There are many advantages to staff. More staff are able to attend our all staff meetings when they're online than when they were in person. 
We also have our satellite locations in Marin and San Mateo. And those staff have felt more a part of the larger Arc of San Francisco community because they're able to join the meetings easily and take advantage of resources that are available to our entire Arc of San Francisco. Another benefit with staffing is we don't have to just offer day program services between nine and three. When we offered day, when we had to offer only full days between nine and three, uh, it was very difficult to provide residential services. Some day program staff would also work for residential services, but then there would only be two hours from three to five that they were that everyone was available to work. So it's provided a lot more flexibility for our participants for both their day services and for their residential services. And staff reports really liking uh, learning about other parts of the ARC and feeling included in the bigger ARC family. We know that we are very lucky to have the resources as a larger organization to have the resources to provide um, a website, a learning online learning platform like the Hub. Very fortunate to have the talented staff to create that. And we know that some smaller agencies might not have that. We are offering curriculum and the customized hub structure to other providers for a fee. We can also offer technical assistance without curriculum through the Thrive Initiative as needed. I just wanted to end my point uh, by saying I was in a Zoom class with participants and I was saying we get a lot of questions from participants about when is the art going to be open. And I, before I could give what I thought was the answer, one of the participants chimed in and she said, the, Cynthia, she said, the ARC is open now. The ARC is not a building, the ARC is a community. We are open on Zoom, we are open on the hub, and now we are open in people's neighborhoods, in outdoor classes, bringing the classroom to them. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Uh, that was really, really helpful information to get us started here today and some really great things that you have been able to bring to your community of the ARC San Francisco. And thank you so much for also offering to the larger community support as well. So if any of you out there would like more information on their hub or anything else they're doing, we do hope that you'll join us for this Friday's Lunch and Learn, or you can reach out to our Disability Thrive Initiative team or the ARC San Francisco. All links and contact information will be at the end of this webinar. So we're going to go ahead now and dive a little deeper into remote services and what the ARC San Francisco has been doing in that area. But before I introduce the next presenter, I would like to introduce more people from the ARC San Francisco talking about what it was like to get started with remote services. Play the video, please. Hey there. Hey, my name is Cole. I've been with the ARC for four years. Wonderful. Cole, can I ask you a question? Yeah. You are a musician mm -hmm. and you love theater. Yes. Correct. You, jo you started doing theater during the pandemic, right? Mm hmm Okay. Did you, before the pandemic, did you ever take any theater classes with the ARC? No. Okay, we just didn't have them out here, huh? Out in Marin. Mm-hmm. So since the pandemic hit, did you start taking pan, uh, theater classes? Yeah. Wonderful. What did you do? One I did Greece, and the other did uh, the other I did Home, and, and then the theater class that I'm doing now is we just we just make up whatever we do as we go along. Yeah, kind of. Hi, my name is Jake Robin. Um, I'm new here, but I've been nervous and shy to work here. Yeah, so first, this is a little nervous to sit with me, right? Yeah. I get nervous doing this too. You've been with the ARC for how many years? Oh, uh, four months. Four years? Well, yes, I A long time, four <laughs> years. I've four seen years. you grow up, right? Yeah. Gee, hey. Yes. When we went into lockdown mm -hmm. and we weren't allowed to see each other. No. How were you feeling then? I feel a little scared yeah. and don't be scared. 
Right. We, but it's just nervous. It's scary at first, right? Yeah. Were you sad that you couldn't get together with everybody? Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of a, that was sad. Your friends, yeah. And scary. And you miss your friends? I miss them, yeah. Okay. And then I told you that we were going to start some remote classes online with a computer. Yes. How'd that make you feel? I feel very good. Hi there. Hi. Hey, what's your name? My name is Demelza Rose. And how long have you been with us, Demelza? Uh, I don't know how long. I, I don't want to say like four. Yeah, probably about four years, I think, right? Yeah. So let's just have a quickie here. Demelza, what, when you heard we were in lockdown and we were going to start remote classes, mm -hmm. how'd you feel before we started? Um, I feel like proud and brave. Was that after we started or before we before. started? Did you, were you ready to do it? Or were you a little nervous at first? I'm a little nervous at first. Yeah, okay, that's understandable. Once we started doing it and it became familiar, then how'd you feel? Proud and tough. You're a tough girl, huh? You have been with us for five years and one whole year of that has been remote and not in person. All right, that's kind of hard to deal with at first, huh? So did you participate in online remote classes? Most of the time. Great. So, did you enjoy it? I like it. What did you enjoy about it? Seeing uh, all the group being happy and all enjoying the, uh, seeing all, the, all of us together. So, like, we all miss each other during the pandemic. Was it good to be able to be a part, be a part of something instead of being away from everyone? Wonderful. Hi, what's Hello. your name? Hello, my name is Angela. Costco Garcia. Thank you for joining me, Angela. How long have you been with the ARC? For two, two years. Wonderful. Angela, have you ever done a Zoom class before the pandemic? No. Ha. <laughs> when you heard about taking classes from your computer, how'd you think? What'd you think about that? It was great. Were you nervous at first? No. Not at all. I was brave. You are brave. I was so brave. And you were ready to try a challenge? Yes. That a girl. You ended up being one of our big class attenders. Yes. Two classes that really stick out that were favorites. Tell me one. Oh, that's um, social hour. Yeah. And do commission Zoom class. Communication Zoom, Zoom class. Zoom That is wonderful. Tell me something that you've learned from these classes. Um, oh gosh, hanging out with friends. Great. And did I love you... hanging out with friends. I know They're you do. They're so awesome. Mm -hmm. You've got great friends. And then I like I like I like to cook. Uh, listen. Did listen. You, did and... you practice your listening skills? Yes. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you to everyone at the ARC San Francisco who gave us a little bit of an idea of what it was like to get started when everyone had to pivot so quickly. And I think that brings us to our next presenter, Kim Thielen, DSP2 Education Specialist, as she dives deeper into the types of remote learning that are taking place and why it's been so beneficial for everyone. So it's all yours, Kim. Kim, check your, your mute. Thank you. I was doing what my our participants now call pulling a Kim. So um, thank you for that warm welcome. And um, I'm here today to talk about why we should continue remote learning. And our participants have been a valued partner throughout the development of our remote services. So they've been helping us make learning fun, accessible and engaging. Next slide, please. Oops. Uh, so I just wanted to refer to the video before that was shown at the beginning where we asked our participants, uh, what is it that you're learning from remote services? And in preparation for this presentation, I asked a small group of participant volunteers from our breakfast club to join me in a breakout room to discuss what they had been learning throughout our remote learning or through our uh, through the hub. And the, uh, those videos are directly what they said with less than 10 minutes preparation, just me explaining what this was about. And I think they did an amazing job. 
So person-centered remote services. How can we create Zoom and remote services which are even more person-centered? And um, I think one of the important things that we need to know is to ask them leading questions like who, what, when, where, and why, and then wait for them to give the replies. Encourage participation by asking participants to share their ideas and take on leadership roles. Look for opportunities for empowerment. Invite them to help uh, come up with ideas for an event. They really are looking for those opportunities. Also, utilize tools to engage people who have varied learning styles. I like to use a lot of pictures in my classes, maybe listen to some music or a video, take a break in the middle to stretch, whatever it is that they need to help them be able to focus and learn. Next slide, please. So I sat around, again, uh, I do a lot of this, uh, around the table brainstorming with our participants. So they were asked for their advice on what helps them learn. How can we make classes more accessible, fun, and engaging? And the next slides are their answers. Next slide, please. So first, they said to say things clearly and slowly. Raise your hand to talk and wait to be called on. Also, we want to take turns speaking. We want to teach and demonstrate take space, make space. Take space and make space is the idea that if we're a little bit shy to speak, we take the space to share our ideas and concerns, even if we're a little shy or scared. And if we are more confident in our, with our public speaking, that we give space and support those who are not in sharing their thoughts and ideas. So also muting between answering or asking questions is very helpful. This helps us to be able to hear each other. And some of us cannot pr process too much noise all at once. It gets to be really overwhelming. Next slide, please. Also, humor, games, and role-playing. Don't forget that learning can and should be fun. Um, too much humor and you kind of lose the focus of your audience. But if, it's, if you don't have any humor, your class might be dry as a saltine cracker. Also use PowerPoint and multimedia because we can read the slides, that is the participants, and listen. Pictures and videos are also really helpful. Next slide, please. So at the beginning of every term and often throughout the semester, I like to review classroom agreements with the participants. I like to open the discussion by asking people to share what helps them learn and then come up with a short list of things that most people agree are helpful. Doing this offers folks with specific learning needs an opportunity to share what helps them learn better and feel included. Next slide, please. It's easier to follow classroom expectations when you know what they are ahead of time. And it's even better when you're included in creating those agreements. Um, so here we have a sample of online meeting norms for engaging inclusive conversations. Have your video camera on as much as possible. Update your name label and include your pronouns. This really helps us out with attendance. Use the chat for on-topic conversation and questions. It's really, some really great discussions have uh, started off through our, our chats during our classes. And also to keep yourself on mute until you're ready to speak. This lowers background noise and helps us all be able to focus better. Next slide, please. So um, again, some more tips for engaging participation on Zoom. It's important for engagement to introduce participants to classes which have meaning and purpose for them. Whenever possible, encourage people to give their input, ask and answer questions, or to volunteer to read. 
Some people are uncomfortable showing their video and they commute better by writing their responses in the chat. One person on my caseload, John Doe, relayed to me that they were uncomfortable showing their video and speaking on Zoom. They chose to participate in the chat to reduce their anxiety around people seeing their home. Next slide, please. One of our greatest assets at the ARC, in my mind, is our Client Advocacy Committee. Their observations and ideas have helped us navigate through the past year in an even more inclusive way. We discuss current events, advocacy opportunities, share ideas, propose new classes, and their interest in helping teach them. They've become our think tank and are included in many of our decisions at the agency and in our community. Next slide, please. CAC changes lives of people. The Kelsey Housing Project staff came to one of our CAC meetings to get feedback from our client advocacy committee about their new civic center project to create an inclusive living space. Two people from the CAC volunteered to be part of the Kelsey Housing Project Advisory Committee. They give their opinions on how to better serve the needs of people who will live there. They are a big part of the decision-making process from the ground up. One of our participants is now working with her family to learn independent living skills. Her parents had been afraid of her learning how to cook and are now teaching her at home how to cook some of the meals that their family prepares together. She plans to apply to live there when it's completed in two years. Our CAC meets every Friday from 1 to 2.30 p.m. We've had higher attendance and participation through Zoom as people from all three of our locations, Marin, San Mateo, and Howard Street can join us more easily. Every month, our participants plan a town hall where they write their own speeches, often with the support of their staff to share the things that they feel are important to share with their peers. The next slide is a video of one of our town halls, which are held on the last Friday of every month. So that would be this Friday. And next slide and video, please. Hi, my name is Jamie Wong. Welcome to the CAC town hall meeting we call, we are inclusive all star dolphins. We will be discussing different topics. So please sit back and enjoy our clients advocates. Have a wonderful nice weekend. Thanks for coming to our CAC meeting. Have a nice day. Hi, my name is Julia Diaz. We enjoy doing speeches and one a class that help us teach us teachers how to dry Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah Lim. Today I'll be talking about my pg &E and board member experience. When I was an intern at pg &E, I learned a lot of office skills, like public speaking, filing, data entry, and meeting. I've been in COVID, this COVID-19 for a long time. I and I talked to my staff, Marcus from East Bay Innovations, and happy in going back to school at Strides, even though I still have to wear a mask. And I'm going to start in July, and I have a new case manager. Hello, my name is Tatiana Voiko. I like to talk about safety in community and following the, at the ARC. 
and follow the not schedule to be too positive and help our community. They are mine. Hi, this is Sarah speaking for Angel. I will like to come to the dental class that will start in July with Jamie Crane to talk about cleaning our teeth very good and to not eat candy because it it is bad for your for you and brush your teeth very good. Brian, my turn. My turn, Lisa. All right. This is Lisa Potter. I would like to talk about the budget. I have seen many staff leave from the ARC. When staff leave, clients feel nervous and scared. They aren't going to know what happened next. San Francisco has very high rent. The staff needs money to take care of their family, pay for the staff, start just about run ways. Hi, my name is Renee. I just want you guys to know I am the new board member. If you have any questions or concerns, you can come to me and I will represent you on the on the board. I'm looking forward to serving on the board for the next three years. I hope everybody, I hope someday you will become a powerful advocate like the members of the CAC. Thanks for listening to my speech and have a wonderful and blessed day. Next slide, please. And thank you to all of our members of the CAC for that excellent town hall. The next thing that I'd like to take a moment to talk about is providing leadership opportunities. So um, participants approached me about having an online class to learn about inclusion and re reduce the microaggressions and the bullying that, that can sometimes happen when we start getting a little stressed out. And COVID is no difference. Um, not being able to see your friends that you're used to every day can, can cause you know, some, some feelings to come up. So we set up a Zoom meeting to brainstorm ideas and we came up with the 12 days of inclusion. Um, first, we held a Zoom to brainstorm those ideas to learn about the microaggressions and how to be more inclusive and understanding with one another. Each person on the team chose a different activity from a list I created, and a few did their own searches for icebreakers on the internet and emailed them to me. Everybody picked a day to lead, and then we set up a second Zoom for everybody to have the opportunity to teach their game with each other and support each other in those games. Seven months later now, and I'm still being asked if we could do it again, they reported feeling empowered and wanted and still are asking for more opportunities to teach or co-teach their peers more often. Next slide, please. So remote services have provided us an additional platform to develop skills and learning opportunities, such as creative use of tools like Zoom, new ways to communicate and share our needs, to develop healthy class guidelines, to access to get our words out into the world. Our participants have been supporting one another, sharing links and helping people get into classes. 
Um, also sharing information, utilizing a remote learning website on the hub, sharing links and opportunities with each other. There's been a lot of advocacy um, opportunities lately, expressing their ideas and generally coming together to make our community even stronger. They're teaching us how to thrive. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kim. We really appreciate all the great advice and tips from everyone there at the ARC San Francisco for how to make the most out of your remote programming. And also, I love hearing about the CAC and all the topics that are discussed, whether people are advocating just for what they want to be doing or whether it is the budget and rents in San Francisco. It is really great to know that people are getting active out there in, um, San at the ARC San Francisco. So I I do know though that you have a lot more going on at the ARC San Francisco than just your robust remote calendar. So to bring us more information on their hybrid services, I would like to introduce Lenita Britton. Thank you for the slide advance. Um, thank you so much for being here today, Lenita. If you'd please join us and let us know what else you have going on. Thank you, Amber. Thank you for that introduction. Um, for phase two, uh, oh, sorry, I'm Juanita Britton. I'm a DSP2 resource specialist, and I will be talking about phase two hybrid services with social distancing and masks. Um, next slide, please. So here on this slide about socialization, you will see how we highlight alternative ways to, that we bring the classroom to our participants. Um, you show how our, we can show, we've shown here how our participants, they're interacting with um, their staff out in the community safely, wearing their masks. Um, next slide, please. There's some other ways that we're bringing the classroom to our participants um, in our, in their community and um, take it through taking a walk or um, bike riding, getting physical activity or exercise. Next slide, please. Here in this, um, this video, you'll see um, Shauna. She's uh, one of our participants who goal was to lead a dance class or a Zumba class. So here you'll be able to see her in action. Um, so um, play the video, please. Tan perfecto, no encuentro defectos, mi mundo tal revés. Tú tienes el físico exacto y tienes ese orgullo intacto. Tú tienes tantas cualidades, no parecen reales. Tú a mí me gusta tanto. Y siempre está peleándome. No drama, no drama, no drama. please. Volunteering here is um, where we meet, bring the, also bring the class to our participants with volunteering. Um, earlier, uh, Cynthia had mentioned 
um, Chris and his trail, his volunteering. So during the pandemic, Chris um, staff brought the art to him and supporting him volunteering safely outdoors while wearing a mask and social distancing. Chris volunteered doing trail maintenance for the Golden State National Park and the Presidio Trust. Chris uses a communication device for speaking. With his communication device and staff support, Chris created and edited a video about his favorite trail. It's called Exploring the Presidio Bay Area Ridge Trail. Chris gives a tour of the trail and shows and shares, sorry, interesting facts about his history, about its history and about the plants and animals that can be found there. Chris video also um, was highlighted in the Presidio Trails Volunteer Newsletter, and it, it, it is available on YouTube. Even if you don't live in the Bay Area, you can take Chris's virtual tour to the um, Presidio Ridge Trail. Um, so next slide, please. Public art. Here's another way of bringing um, the classroom to our participants through um, visually uh, looking at some of the art in the community and just actually trying to figure out, you know, what that artist meant or what he maybe um, what that art means to that participant, um, what they like, the color scheme and things like that. Next slide, please. Also, bringing the classroom to our participants. And we meet them where they are playing with playing games, maybe a card game. Just here, we see they're playing a card game of Uno, uh, which is really fun to uh, test your brain skills and your knowledge to move quickly. Next slide, please. So in um, health matters here, we do, we have one and two, um, we have two uh, forms. We have two health matter classes that we have here um, on Zoom where we do a check-in. We um, talk about maybe how our day was going, if we had a healthy lunch or what we did in breakfast club, maybe something exciting happened. So we do a check-in. Um, also, we have uh, we do a check-in where we talk about we're healthy. So an example would be, I am healthy when I eat fruits. I am healthy when I make my doctor's appointment. Um, I am healthy when I have someone, um, uh, someone to talk to. Um, this is a good way in health matters where we get to learn about others. And um, we also remind each other how important we are inside this class too. Because it all um, is all connected to health. Um, it's also I'm also um, in class. We find that we're providing a safe place to ask questions. We found that it may seem silly when we don't ask the question that's in our mind, and um, you know we'll be wondering for the rest of the day, um, you know what that what that answer would have been. So we're trying to provide a safe environment where they can share the ideas that's on their uh, minds. Um, also, we set goals in this class too. So a good example of setting goals may be, um, I want to drink more water, or I would like to walk more, um, or take more classes. Um, next slide, please. Um, on this slide here, we talk about, in Health Matters too, we talk about what does it mean to be healthy, we identify um, when they're healthy, um, when I'm happy or when I have friends. I'm healthy when I have a job that I enjoy going to. And we also talk about acknowledging our emotions and let go of things that you know we can't change or maybe we're dealing with um, someone we care about and we want to express how we feel. We learn ways of that. We also, um, we talk about things that we did, um, facing our fears and dealing with um, emotions as well. Um, being aware, sharing ideas uh, when we're feeling down and what we do when we're feeling down. Or maybe we have something physically going on. We have a stomach ache. We share our ideas and bounce off 
um, ideas of the things we do to calm ourselves down or to um, subside that stomach ache. Next slide, please. Um, in this uh, video, we'll talk about, we'll look at um, art in the park. Play, play the video, please. Her and Xavier, and we're painting. Mim's hand is blocking half the painting. Here we go. Got a group <laughs> artwork sure. happening here. Can you show your tongue every time? Yes. <laughs> That's right. Every time. Next slide, please. So thank you so much, Lenita. We really appreciate that. Uh, all those examples of ways that you, the ARC San Francisco has found to safely create hybrid services and start to get people back out into the things that are meaningful and important to them. So I really appreciate your time here today. And I'm also really excited that the art doesn't stop at um, uh, the ARC San Francisco with our previous video, but we now actually are going to be going live to the Castro neighborhood in San Francisco. And I'd like to introduce you to Mim and Cliff, who should be joining us there to sh oh. show us live their Art Reach pop-up shop. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Lenita. Okay, I need my video to go live, please. Uh, okay, we will get that happening for you right now. Thank you. There we go. I'm glad we got okay. that figured out. Thank you. Hi, everybody. We're here at Market Street at our pop up shop. Can I get everybody to say hi? Everybody say hi. hi. So we have what happens, come on and show us your mermaid there. So here is an example of what happens to the art after it's made online. So we send packets to artists, they make projects such as this beautiful mermaid, and then they get taken out here into our gorgeous pop-up shop. And we have various participants learning how to be salespeople, and we have participants learning how to sell their own art and other people's art. And Cliff is gonna show us a few more pieces. Why don't you put that down Cliff and get us a painting to look at. So our art programs are recreational and fun and social and amazing. And those are available to anybody who's involved at, in any way, shape or form with the Arc of San Francisco. But we also have a program for professional artists where we do more professional development. And Cliff is holding up another piece that's beautiful, made by another one of our professional artists. And our professional artists are given an opportunity to learn how to not only make work, but to make work on a professional level, develop portfolios, and sell in places such as this pop-up shop, as well as museums and galleries in different places in the neighborhood. Thank you, Cliff. And we also have some items that we've printed. We have a very elaborate online sales as well. We have a website, we have Instagram and we do Facebook. And we've recently started making some very beautiful prints of things to sell by artists. So this is made by one of our artists named Robert Ronald Ainsley. And it is a t-shirt of one of his beautiful paintings. So again, learning how to get your art out there, and here we are in the beautiful community of the Castro, which is just the neighboring community from ours where our community center is located. So our art programs are really about not just making art, but actually putting your art out into the world and having a voice. Great, thank you, Cliff. So.
so we also partner with a whole bunch of other organizations. We partner with CCSF. You've heard about City College classes that are available to folks who are interested in drama. We also have art classes and it's really amazing because our online Zoom art classes are attended not only by folks from City College and by folks in all of the programs in all three satellite locations of the Arc of San Francisco, but also access is able to come to our classes as well. And that's transitioning to you. So there's people from five, six, seven different locations coming from schools. They're coming from the community out in the community. They're coming from their homes and they're coming from all over the Bay Area to access those art classes that are offered by CCSL. So our art program is uh, combining different communities, different places, we're out and about. And it's just really vibrant. It's an incredible way for folks to make money, to learn about sales, to learn about professionalism, as well as express themselves as artists and creative people. And many of our art classes also involve a lot of mindfulness. So we do meditation and other things that kind of help folks, especially during this last year of feeling isolated and feeling sad, having a way to express their feelings. So it's a whole host of everything from fun and recreation to self-care and self-love to professional development. And we run the full gamut in our uh, art programs, doing all of those different kinds of things. And we actually have, whoop, you can see we're here at, this is a local salon that has actually donated the space to us. I'm gonna kind of walk out so you can see our whole shop. So here's the whole shop. Everybody wave. Say hi. So here we are. And here's the beautiful salon, a neighborhood partner who has given us the opportunity to sell here. So we partner with a lot of folks in the community as well as other organizations. And I think that's it for us here. So back to our presenters, our main presenters. All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate you giving us that tour, Mim, and thank you to Cliff and everyone else there who is part of the Art Reach pop-up right. shop. I really survived. <laughs> I really wish you all the best with your art sales and everything else that you're up to. I'm, I'm done. I'm on the camera. Oh. I think this just goes to show that there are sometimes opportunities and partnerships in the most surprising of places when we look around and we need to start just thinking creatively. And so I want to again thank everyone from the ARC San Francisco for being willing to share what they are doing as they continue to navigate hybrid services into the future. Next slide. If you would like to contact the ARC San Francisco, they have provided their contact information. And we would like to also encourage you to feel free to reach out to us through the Disability Thrive Initiative Support Center. We are here to help and to connect you to others also navigating these times, whether the ARC San Francisco or other providers doing innovative things out there. Next slide. In the following slides, we have provided links to a variety of resources for both remote and hybrid support and programming ideas. These slides are available through the, um, through the link of the slide deck that has been posted within the chat function, and they'll also be posted on our website within a few days. Um, the next few slides, please. So you can see here a variety of different resources. Next slide. Next slide. And then one more slide, please. We have also included links to the latest in guidance from both DDS and CCL. Just as I said, when we got started, things are continuing to change and be updated. If you find yourself struggling with the continued changes, please reach out to us. And I also highly encourage you to check out our Disability Thrive Initiative change management webinar from a couple of months ago that can be found both on our website and our YouTube channel. Next slide. Finally, we hope that you join us this Friday as we continue the discussion of hybrid services at our Lunch and Learn. You can register for the Lunch and Learn at lunchandlearn.disabilitythriveinitiative.org. Next slide. 
We also hope that you join us for our next webinar, The Changing Role of the Workforce Supporting People with Disabilities on Wednesday, August 11th at 3 p.m. The pandemic offered an unprecedented opportunity to innovate and develop person-centered alternative services and support for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, much as has been discussed here tonight. Like everything else, though, the role of the direct support professional continues to adapt to the individual needs of those served. Our free webinar will bring back John Raphael, Director of Educational Services at the National Alliance for Direct Support Professionals, to discuss these important changes and how to support the workforce supporting people with disabilities. You can register for our webinar at webinar.disabilitythriveinitiative.org. Next slide. We also encourage you to check out our resource library on our website at disabilitythriveinitiative.org and sign up for our mailing list, list if you haven't already at signup.disabilitythriveinitiative.org. Next slide. Once again, our Disability Services Support Center is here to help you with all of your alternative services needs and to connect you to others within the community. You can get support by going to support disabilitythriveinitiative.org. Next slide. And of course, you're always welcome to give us a call or send us an email at 916-238-8811 or email us at info at disabilitythriveinitiative.org. Thank you so much again for everyone being here today. We wish all of you the best of luck on your innovative, hi, innovative hybrid services. And please never feel uh, th uh, that you can't reach out to us in any way. We thank you and we hope to see you this Friday at the Lunch and Learn.